Good evening. I got a bunch of mail, so I guess it's time for another mailbag video. Let's get started. So I want to start with these two little guys here, and uh, I'm pretty excited because I think I know what these are just by feeling them. They're really thin here, and I think these are the same. And just in preparation, I brought this out. This is a uh, aluminum extrusion. Most people use them for uh, 3D printers. So let's see if I'm right. Make sure I'm not cutting into anything here. Like that, yeah, like that. And survey says, wheels. Pretty sweet. Let's take a look. So what these things are is that they're bearings inside of a plastic shell. Let's see if I can get the number of the bearing for you. They look like they are 1655, the number for the bearing. And there's this little shell on it. And they're supposed to fit inside these rails. So let me just zoom you out. So I'm not sure if it's going to fit into here. I'm hoping. Here it goes. Oh, that is close. Let's see here. Yeah, as you can see, it does fit in this rail. Rolls pretty nicely, pretty smooth. So yeah, the point is you make um, you make a carriage put these on and these will rest either side kind of like this on the rail and this will be what will carry the uh, uh, z-axis up and down and what will carry the y-axis uh, left and right right onto those channels so yeah we've got uh, 20 of them here and I think for 20 I paid about uh, 6 or $8 Canadian. Not too bad. So let me just grab the dimensions for you real quick. So this is a 20, 20 which means it should be about, yeah, about 20 mils by 20 mils. 20 mils that direction. 20 mils that direction. And then the middle here so you need a wheel that is at least, uh, I don't know if you can see that, 6.2 about millimeters inside this groove. See what it looks like uh, head on there. So these wheels are actually, uh, let's see, about 22.6 millimeters high. It's hard to measure because they are they do have a circular radius here. Let's see. Yeah, about almost 23 mils tall. Uh, the width is 7.32. So almost the size of the gap in that bar, which means that they'll sit pretty deep, but also they're going to wear out quickly. So. Yeah, I've got a bunch here, so that's pretty good. And then the opening, or the uh, shaft, is going to be just about 5 millimeters. Cool. Alright, now for the next one. This one's pretty bulky. It's pretty tall. So let's see. I'm going to try not to cut anything off. Huh. Let's look at that. These are uh, angle brackets to join up those metal rails. Let's come take a closer look. So these corner brackets, I think they're aluminum, definitely a cast part. So the important thing about these is that this here be entirely square, this angle here, to make sure that uh, your bars will end up square to each other as well. Now what's cool is they have these little legs on them. See these little teeth and they fit inside of here. They do not, don't fit extremely tightly but uh, yeah there you have it. So you're supposed to get these nuts that fit into the profile here, set these brackets on and then put a bolt through here. 
It's not too bad. Um, these were inexpensive. I think uh, I think four of these were about uh, two bucks from AliExpress. So yeah, this is what's going to be holding my 3D printer together eventually when I have time to build it. Hmm. And these things should be 20 millimeters wide. Yeah, there we go. 20 millimeters wide. Let's see how long they are. Just about 28 millimeters tall. The bore in the center. Hard to get this dead on. Yeah, just about six and a half, just over six and a half millimeters wide. So you can fit an M6 bolt in here, no problem. May have trouble with an M7, but you can always drill these out bigger. I don't think the surface needs to be that big. Pretty nice. I do have a square. Maybe I should check see if this is square. Let me go get that. And here is a carpenter square. Let's see. Hmm, it's true. I can't really lean it up on that surface. Well, that's kind of useless, is it? It looks approximately square. I can't tell because these these poles come out. I need a. Uh, well, maybe I can use this edge. Yeah, it doesn't rock in there. Okay, so yeah, square or at least square enough. Next is this one here. It's uh, bulky, but it's kind of rectangular. Let's see. Awesome. These are relay modules for an Arduino. And of course, when I say an Arduino, you can control these with microcontrollers or you can control them with timers. You can control these with uh, uh, old school circuits. You can control these with switches. It's not really for Arduino, but if you search for Arduino, um, you're going to find these a lot easier. So these are actually 5 volt DC relays. Now that doesn't mean that the maximum they can take is 5 volts. 5 volts is just the the amount that you need to the amount of voltage you need to give to it for it to click the contact over. So this is actually a bunch I've got uh, so 10, but they're individual modules. They're just kind of stuck together. See they were routed here when they were built, but they didn't snap them apart. I guess it's much easier to um, break off only the ones you need. Now there's a uh, three contacts here. There should be one in, one uh, normally closed and one normally open and we can check that in a moment. Then over here, I don't know if you can see underneath here, but it says um, plus is in the middle, minus is on one side and signals on the other. So this is kind of like a, like a servo plug for an RC car where the power is in the middle, the uh, negatives on one side and the signal, I guess, to, to flip it over is on the other. Here we have a diode on the side. This would probably be a flyback diode when uh, the inductor inside here, which is the electromagnet, um, gets shut off. A giant spike of um, voltage wants to course back the other direction and this diode provides it a path to go back to itself instead of through your circuitry. Um, there is a transistor right here. So this is not an isolated one. So that means that uh, potentially if you have high voltage on this side it could go back to your uh, microcontroller or whatever. But this is also where we get the 5 volts. This must be uh, applied to the base and then there's a resistor which would be the base resistor so you don't overcurrent your um, transistor. Pretty cool. Really simple little thing. Now it's time to bring in the multimeter. So uh, I'm going to set this to ohms range. Left this on last time. Okay, we're going to check the resistance between the plus and the minus. So this should be for the coil. 
let's see. It's really awkward. I guess I could do this on a breadboard. Let's see. Am I still in shot? Yes, I am. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Okay. So, what's happening here is we can't get across the coil because we're actually going through, we have to go through a transistor. So, in that case, let's just check these pins directly. There we go. Uh, 70.6 ohms to flip the coil. So let's do some calculations here. Literally back of the envelope. So if we go 5 volts divided by 70.6 should give us an amperage reading and that'll tell us how much current the transistor in here is actually going to have to uh, give the coil. So 5 divided by 70.6 equals uh, 0 0.071. So 0.07 of an amp. 0 0.07. Wait, is it 0 0.07? Yep, so actually that is 70 milliamps. So 70 milliamps is a bit too much for a microcontroller. And that's why we give this power here in the middle and ground on one side. And then we just give uh, the couple milliamps, one or two milliamps, maybe even five milliamps that the microcontroller has to supply in order to flip that transistor. Pretty nice stuff. At the same time that we're doing this, we can also see if these contacts truly are um, normally open and normally closed. So let's give this a look. We're going to go here to continuity. And let's see. Yep, see, that one's normally closed. And this one should be normally open, which it is. Okay, and I'm sure if we flip the, um, the transistor on, we should be able to get this, these two to have continuity and these two to not. So let me set that up for a second. Okay, you may have to excuse the crudity of this, but uh, if I tilt this up, you'll see that uh, there's a red here. That's the power, and it's going to that middle pin. Here's the ground, and it's going to the... Uh, the pin all the way on this side and this here is just a free floating wire uh, going to the transistor base um, so that other pin. I'm going to plug this in okay and I'm just going to confirm yet yeah, we have 5 volts on the jumper here okay so now same test as before these two yep yeah, continuity these two no continuity I give this power. Now I can give this power without a base resistor because there is a resistor already on the board. And let's see if we can hear it click. Yep, definitely clicked. Okay, so now these two dead, nothing. These two now they have continuity. And again, pull this, and now the opposite is true. So yeah, these are nice little modules. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just going to give you some dimensions now. Um, so the whole board is uh, 26.7 millimeters. Um, we'll try to add with the uh, header here. By 38.33 with the header. Without the header, it's 33.55 mils and the actual relay, this thing is tiny, 15 mils by 18.8 and uh, yeah I just wanted to mention that a few of these pins are bent these headers are bent by from the shipping but you know 
I'm not too worried. I paid about uh, six dollars and fifty cents for all of these, which is a pretty good deal, I think. And just thought you might want to know the ratings for this. So uh, at thirty volts DC, this thing can handle just about ten amps. Don't think I would push it to its limits, but hey. Oh wait, I didn't notice that. There's an LED here. Can't leave without uh, showing you what color the LED is. Just have my multimeter in diode check here. That's that uh, that little symbol there. Let's see if we can do this. Nope. Oh, maybe it's the other way. Why is it not lighting? Don't tell me I got a bad one. Ah, oh, there we go. It's red. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's red with a forward voltage of almost 2.3. Nice. All right, last one for the night. And uh, this one says uh, heat resistant tape, so wonder what that could be. Just kidding, of course. It is capped on tape. Oh, sorry, I meant capped on tape. And yeah, you gotta be a little tongue in cheek when it comes to uh, capped on tape because look here I don't know if you can see that but it says Capquan or something like that this is a no-name Chinese tape um, so it's like a polyamide tape it's just uh, really heat resistant and um, the beautiful part is that it shouldn't burn uh, if you get this stuff really hot it should melt and never burn you don't want it to burn when it's around electronics. So um, a roll of this was incredibly cheap so I figured I'd give it a shot. So the real Kapton tape should work up to about 260 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to turn on my uh, soldering iron here. I'll put it at 200. We'll be generous. This this is a Chinese cheapie, right? I only paid about uh, I think it was 250 for a 3 meter roll. That's 250 uh, Canadian Copex, by the way, not uh, not American dollars, not Australian dollar dues either. Let me see here. I'm gonna stretch some across here, and we'll try to uh, we'll try to melt it with a soldering iron. There we go. Should be nice and solid. All right, soldering irons at. 200 degrees. Uh, make sure we're in focus. Now yeah, you know, good enough for the girls I go out with. I don't know, is this actually hot? I don't feel like touching it. I get some solder. It might be a bit cold for the solder. It's definitely hot. Yeah, it won't melt it. All right. Now here's a good question. How do I prove this is hot? Maybe ruin my soldering tip? Oh, yeah. Burnt the hole right into her. There we go. It is hot. Clean that off. Hopefully the smoke detector doesn't go off for that. Okay. So, yeah, seems to be good at 200. Hot, but no hole in there. Okay, let's bring it up. Go 250. Now the real Kapton tape should still work at 250. Don't know about much higher, but let's see. Give the tip a second to reach equilibrium. Should be able to melt solder now. Come on. 
Okay, small technical difficulties. Um, my battery died, but I assure you, this is the same piece of Kapton tape, and this is a 250 degrees C uh, soldering iron. Let's see if it melts it. Now, since the real stuff melts around 260, I'm guessing this fake stuff is going to be melting quite soon. Still not. Don't know if I can prove how hot this thing is. I don't know if it'll take. So oh yeah, there we go. Hot enough to melt solder. Put the solder side down. No melting. That is impressive. Let's crank it up a bit. 260 apparently is the real kept on tapes melting point. So we'll try 270. Give a second for the uh, the tip to catch up. And here it goes. There's smoke. It is not melting it. Well, let's give it the real test now. I'll put it up to about uh, 325. That's where I usually solder at. So I can give that a second. Yeah, this is this is impressive. Like, really, you you buy cheap stuff from China like this, and you assume it's going to be poop, but the the proof's in the pudding. So let's see, 325. This has got to melt it. just not melting. Wow. Well, you turn off the soldering iron. There there was some smells coming off of that. Maybe it was the adhesive. Um, let's give it the ultimate test, should we? Let's see if this stuff will actually burn. Do this on camera. Oh, look at that. So it looks like it melts, but it doesn't burn, doesn't sustain a flame. I think the uh, the flames you saw were the um, was the adhesive. Yeah, look at that. Just completely disintegrated. Cool. This stuff's a little bit better than I thought. So let me just show you one use for this tape. Um, this here is an iron. Um, I believe this is like a ceramic material. Um, this is an iron for um, shrinking the. Uh, it's like a it's like a shrink wrap that you put over a model plane, an RC plane, and you just lay it over your uh, the frame, and then you go over with this, and you, you what it does is it smooths out the um, plastic, it shrinks it tight, and uh, it uh, makes sure the adhesive cures, so it's like self-adhesive. So, so this is basically just a heating element that you uh, plug into your wall. Really nothing special about it. This one was free. It was given to me by uh, a neighbor of mine when he, uh, when he moved away. Um, now, the reason the uh, Kapton tape would be used is for one of these. This is a uh, thermocouple, so it has uh, two different metals up here uh, which are welded together and they are two different types of metal and when you um, change the temperature in the joint um, the resistance of this changes or is it the voltage? I don't know. Something like that. Uh, you plug these into a multimeter and that's a good way to get let me just prop this up. That's a good way to get um, accurate temperature readings. So um, obviously this thing will get hot. I don't know how hot but this is what this is about, right? So alright, so I'm gonna take this end here and on my meter, my specific meter, the uh, black goes here and for the temperature it goes down here. Okay, that's set up. Now I can put this in degrees C 
and you should be seeing, yeah, 16, 17, that's just about how cold it is in my basement. Now, to hold the thermal couple onto the uh, iron, I'll just be using a little bit of this capped on tape, right? So I'm going to tape it on right here, like this. Maybe I should uh, route this outwards instead, like this. There we go. And then you can cut the end off, like so. There we go. And, uh, oh, one more thing before I plug this in. Um, these cutting mats are not particularly heat resistant, so I'm just going to prop it up a bit with one of these uh, aluminum pieces. I'm going to put it this way so you can still see. Alright, 16. I've got a uh, thermometer here that says it is, you know, roughly 17 degrees. This is a bit cooler because it was in a different room up until a few seconds ago. So let me, I'll set this to the lowest setting, like that. It's on the lowest setting, and I'm going to plug it in, and we should be seeing this climb. I'm not sure how fast it is. It is powered by AC. So now we should be able to see this come up, which I'm not sure if all the way that way is off, so I'm just going to put it to 1 maybe. I don't know if you can see that, I know it's super reflective. Oh, geez, yep, there it goes. Okay, let's give it a, a few moments here, we'll see where it tops out. Okay, so it seems to have reached an equilibrium around uh, 73, now you see, 73 Celsius, mind you. Um, now we see that it's dropping, I don't know if I can, I don't know if you can see the Celsius sign in the corner here, right there. You see now it's dropping, so now it's just turned off, and then uh, has a bit of hysteresis, and when it gets low enough it'll turn back on and then climb back up. So let's, uh, let's crank it up all the way now. It's also sitting on aluminum, so it is dissipating a bit of the heat. But uh, the, this thing is pretty hot. Okay, up it goes. 90. 100 C, so that's hot enough to boil water now. Keeps going up. Just make sure it's properly stuck down. Oops, look. <laughs> Melted my Sharpie. Oh, interesting. I have the box right beside me here. Uh, up to, I don't know if you can see that, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So, let's see what it is in Fahrenheit. It's close. It's not far off. So yeah, and then we can just uh, turn this off or unplug it, and then watch it drop. It's going down slowly. There's a lot of thermal mass in here, but if I just pull that out, the lack of thermal mass here will mean that it drops really rapidly. There we go. So let me just. Ah. <laughs> That's pretty hot, but yeah, there we go. Unscathed, and still sticky. You can still stick it down to things, right? So even though I'm done with this iron, I can still stick this down with the same piece of tape to this aluminum and rapidly cool it down. I just gotta be careful where I put this iron. And there we go. 19C because it was uh, being heated by the iron. But yeah, this tape is going to be very useful. And this assortment of parts is today's mailbag. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and hit a like. If you don't like this video, well, let me know what you didn't like about it. If you want me to dive in deeper into the objects I get, 
let me know also. Maybe I dive in too deep. Let me know. I'm at a stage in my I'm at a stage in my channel that I really need your feedback, so let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.